Can we just give our worship leaders and the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Real quickly, uh, next Sunday is going to be very, very special. So I hope that you will uh, make plans to be here. Worship will be much like what we did on Easter where both services will be the same. And then you get to hear one of my favorite people in the world, literally one of my favorite people in the world, preach, Martin Durham. Martin Durham was an investment banker in London. He's a high, very well educated, very well spoken um, man who experienced the great, the saving grace of Jesus in his life, uh, left the investment banking world and started preaching on the streets where he worked. And so I look forward to you being able to be with Martin. Um, Joshua Tepper and I, you'll remember a couple years ago, uh, went and walked uh, in Poland and we went with, with Martin. So I look so forward to you hearing one of the greatest gospel preachers of our time uh, speak next Sunday. So I hope that you will uh, be here for that. Uh, Today we are continuing in our sermon series that we've titled how to follow Jesus. And I don't know if you know, that's an important thing for us, right? That we might understand what it means to follow Jesus. So whether you're a brand new Christian, you're a brand new person to faith, and you, you're learning and wanna know how to follow Jesus, or you have been a, a follower of Christ, a Christian all of your life, um, the, this series is for you. So in other words, it's for everybody, all right? Amen. And today, the title of the message is Walking in Faith. So I wanna invite you to stand with me one more time. Out of respect for the reading and the hearing of God's word, we're going to be, I'm gonna be in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11, I wanna read verses one through verse six. And I'm reading today from one of my study Bibles. This is the, the New King James Version. Hear, the, hear these words, Hebrews 11, beginning with verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. I love that. Verse five, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he, was, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we come today, Lord, uh, we come today as a people of faith and God, our desire is that, w- that we would follow you faithfully, that we would follow you more faithfully today than at this time um, last year or even last week for that matter. And Lord, I pray today that you would empower us, that we might be a people who walk by faith and not by sight. Let it be so for us today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Thank you, and you can be seated. Earlier this month, the Southeastern Conference held their track and field championships. Now, I I don't normally follow track and field, but this year, the championships just happened to take place in one of my favorite cities on the whole planet, and that's Oxford, Mississippi. That's God's country, by the way. And because it was in Oxford, I decided that I would watch it and uh, watch some of it anyway. And what was interesting that this year is that the, the Crimson Tide 
we're supposed to have the best track and field team of all the other teams. They were supposed to win this year. As a matter of fact, uh, those who follow track and field say that it wasn't even a wasn't even gonna be close, that they were so much better, so much stronger, so much faster, that they were just uh, hands down the winners before they even started. And true to form, the tide came out and man, the wave was going and they were doing well. And then it got to the, the 400 meter uh, relay, 400 meter relay. The guns, the gun sounds, the pistol sounds and the race begins and uh, true to form, the, the tide is out in front and they, they make the, the first exchange of the baton and everything's great. They, they make the, the next one and the next one and everything is going just like they had planned and obviously just like they had practiced until the very last leg of the relay. And as they were making the exchange, it wasn't that they fumbled the baton, but they ran out of time in order to make the exchange effectively. And when the exchange is not made, you don't get second place or or third place, you just lose, right? They lost. The strongest, the fastest, the best, the hands down winners of the SEC track and field championship was supposed to be the Alabama Crimson Tide. But because they didn't make the exchange, they didn't win. Just so you know, Ole Miss didn't win either. It was the Arkansas Razorbacks. The Razorbacks won it. Here's the thing that is so important as I think about today, Memorial Day weekend. And I think about our faith. One of the things that I think that is so, so vitally important to us, you know, our, our, obviously it's our freedom. And as Jonathan talked about, it's this, the freedom that we, that we have. And it's so important that, that we pass down this, this understanding of what it means to be a free people to the next generation. It's so vitally important that we do that. But there's one thing that's even more important than that. There, there's one thing that, that's more important than, than passing down freedom that the generation um, that comes after us will remember more than our freedom. And you know what it is? It's our faith. As followers of Jesus Christ, the, the, one of the most important thing is people who, who walk in faith that the greatest thing, that the, one of the most important things as believers, as followers of Jesus again, that we can do is pass our faith to the next generation. Dr. James Dobson said this. Dr. James Dobson focused on the family. He says, according to the Christian values which govern my life, my most important reason for living is to get the baton, the gospel, safely into the hands of my children. Do y'all know that's important? Uh, Parents and grandparents, do you know that it is vitally important that we pass down the faith, the, the saving message of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the next generation? Do you know we don't come in second if we don't get the baton path? Do you know what happens that we lose? That our faith is just one generation away from non-existence. The greatest thing that we can do is pass down the faith to the next generation. I'll tell you as a father and as a pastor, it is my greatest burden. It is my greatest burden, not just to pass the faith to, to my children, which we work really hard trying to do in a world that makes it very difficult. But as a church, as a people of God here at Mount Bethel, it is passing the faith down to the next generation. I'll tell you this, just so you know, I'll do anything short of sin, anything to pass the faith to the next generation. Let me tell you, if country music is in, I'd be all for playing country music on Sunday morning if it'll help pass the faith to the next generation. It's one of the, it is the 
most important thing that we can do. As people walk in faith, what does it mean for us to walk by faith or to walk in faith? Here's the thing. We can only give away, we can only pass, we can only give an inheritance of the things that we possess ourselves. So if we're going to give faith, we have to have faith and we have to walk in faith. So what does it mean to walk by faith? This is what the writer of Hebrews says. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Now, verse 11 doesn't um, define faith. It describes faith. So before you can tell someone what faith does, you first have to tell them what faith is, right? So again, what is faith? Here's the first thing that I want you to hear this morning is that faith is a substance that is real. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh, Let's look a little bit deeper into this word Substance. Let's unpack it so that we can gain a, a greater understanding of what the writer of Hebrew, Hebrews is trying to, to tell us. Uh, the, the Latin word for substance is, is broken into two uh, very important parts. The first part of that word is the word sub. And, and sub is, is real important because it means under. I want you to think of uh, it in terms of a foundation or a subflooring. If the floor that you're standing on is going to, to carry you, if it's gonna be strong enough not to, to cave in, it has to be strong. And so it has to have a solid foundation. So that's the first part of this word substance. The second part is the Latin word, which I'm not going to try to say, but just know it's the the stance part. And it's a verb meaning to stand. So substance here, it literally means something to stand on. In other words, faith is a solid foundation. When we walk by faith, it means that we are not walking on the sinking sand, are we? We're walking on what? The solid foundation. Right, so the substance of what we hope for. See, your faith is the foundation of your future. Faith, our faith is the foundation for our future. And here's why, again, it's the substance of things hoped for. Faith sees the future as guaranteed in the present. Faith is not believing in something despite of what you think is true. It's believing in something because you know it's true. See, faith is based on fact, but it's also more than that. For for example, today it is, this morning, it is a fact that you've come to church on Memorial Day weekend. That's a fact. It's a fact that you are sitting in the pews It's also a fact that that I am standing on this platform and I am speaking to you. The faith component of this is that are you hearing what I'm saying, right? Are are you listening? Is this a good time to go to sleep? You know, are you, that's the faith part. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let Let me explain it like this. It is a historical fact that Jesus Christ lived. It is a historical fact that that Jesus was crucified on the cross. It is a historical fact that the tomb was empty. It is also a historical fact based on the, the writings of many eyewitnesses who had, they had conversations with the risen Jesus three days after he was crucified. You know, that is his historical fact. But you know what faith is? Faith is believing he rose from the dead. Faith is believing that he rose. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance the foundation, the, the, the strong foundation of things hoped for. 
We go to the original Greek language, this word substance, it referred to a, a title deed or a legal guarantee. Now, now why, does, why, why in the world would the author of Hebrews use a word that would be used to refer to a, a title deed or a legal guarantee when talking about faith? Here's why. Faith doesn't mean I'm going to get it. Faith says I already have it. I don't wait uh, to get to heaven one day to experience heaven. You know what faith says? Faith says that I can have heaven today in my heart. Faith doesn't say that I'm gonna try to live my best so that one day I can make heaven. Faith says that I can live today, that I can live my everyday life moment by moment and experience heaven, at least a, a piece of heaven in the here and now. It's the substance of things hoped for. Here's the second thing. It is evidence that is reliable. Our faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. See, faith looks to the past, it lives in the presence, but it longs for the future. Your faith, my faith, it is not founded on fantasy. It is rooted in reality. Again, it is both the substance of things hoped for, and then I love this, it is the evidence of things not seen. The Greek word for evidence is a proof by which a thing is proved or tested. Evidence is the body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or a proposition is true. Judges rule, juries pronounce verdicts, and settlements are reached based on the evidence, that is the body of facts and information of a particular case. Now, evidence is really important to us, isn't it? Amen, it is. You may not know it, but it is. Evidence is very important to us. So you, you, can, you can get out there and, and say whatever it is you wanna say, but what does the evidence say? Uh, you, you can get out there and you can claim anything to be truth. You, you can claim all sorts of things, but what does the evidence say? See, the evidence is vitally, vitally important. It is the proof by which a case is founded on and judged upon. See, faith is the legal proof, the evidence, that absolute guarantee of things that are not seen. See, faith sees what the eyes can't see. Your eyes give you sight, but it's faith that gives us vision. Faith sees the invisible, it touches the intangible, it hears the inaudible, and it attempts the impossible. Your sight may be perfect. You may have 20-20 vision, but eyes of faith see clearer, farther, and better than our physical eyes ever will. Do you hear me this morning? It is vitally important that as a people who walk by faith that, that we understand that there is more to life than what you can see, that what you can feel or, or what you can touch, that there is much more. In fact, the greatest things in your life today are the things that you can't see. For, for example, what about love? Boy, isn't love wonderful? See, we, we can see what love does, but you, you can't see love. I would tell you that, that love is one of the most powerful forces in all of the universe, but you can't see it. I, I would tell you that, that passion and zest for living is one of the greatest um, attributes of a person fully alive, but you can't see, you can see the effects of it, but you can't see what it really looks like. But that person who is filled with love and lives with a, a passion and a zest for life, that's more important than what you can see. See, we live in a world oftentimes that says, seeing is, or believing is seeing. 
In other words, I have to see it before I believe it. You remember Thomas, the, the disciple, he, he said something like that. The disciples came to him and they had already seen Jesus, but Thomas hadn't. And they said, Thomas, hey, we have seen the Lord. Remember what Thomas said? I'm not gonna believe it. I gotta see it first. I, I, I've got to see the nail prints in his hand. I don't have to, he said, I don't even have, it's not only that I need to see him, hey, I gotta touch him. He said, I've got to see his side. I have to see that, I not only see it, but I have to touch it. He had to see before he believed. But remember what Jesus said to Martha? You remember Martha's brother Lazarus had, he had died and uh, she thought that Jesus had, had showed up too late. You know, sometimes we may feel like Jesus is late, but he's always on time when he comes. And Jesus said to Martha, he said, didn't I tell you, Martha, that if you would just have faith to believe that you would see the glory of God. See, the world says what you see is what you get, but the Bible says that what you get is what you don't see. What you don't see. Do you know if seeing is believing, or believing rather is seeing, that's a terrible way to live your life. Um, imagine if you live that way, that the only way you're gonna believe is to see. The truth of the matter is, is you'll never really be successful if you live life that way. I'm always sharing videos with my children. We've got a, a, a family text message connection. I don't know what you call that, but all of us are on the same text string. And it's called Family Force Five. All five of us connected. And anytime that the family needs to know something and we're not able to talk, you text and you're able to hear. Well, I use it as an opportunity to share uh, sayings and videos with my kids. And I, I think it gets on their nerves most of the time when I do it. Uh, but I recently shared a video by an attorney. Her name is uh, Mel Robbins. And, and Mel um, is an author. She is a high profile attorney and speaker. She's done TED Talks. And, and she's in this interview and she says that that which separates the most successful people in the world is that they are able to see something before it becomes a reality. That they are able to, to visualize themselves or a circumstance out into the future. And because they can see it, before, they, before it's actually a reality is they work towards it. And she said, that is the number one thing that separates that one or 2% of the most successful people in all the world. Now, I don't know what Ms. Robbins um, where if she's a Christian or not. I, I know I like her books and I, I like the talks that she gives, but what she's saying is, is actually not new information, is it? 2,000 years ago, uh, the writer of Hebrews said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible for the one who believes. He also said this, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. James, the brother of Jesus said, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. And then the apostle Paul said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Think about it this way. Every single one of us, whether we recognize it or not, live by faith. Live by faith. For example, at some point today, you're gonna turn on the water faucet and you're gonna believe that that water is okay to drink. It's not gonna be contaminated. You're gonna drink it. 
Uh, some of you, you're going to get in a car and you're going to drive up and down Johnson's Ferry Road. You might even get on 285 at some point this week during five o'clock traffic, believing and having faith that your brakes are going to work. Uh, some of you, uh, uh, this summer, you're, you're going to go down to Hartsfield Jackson uh, International Airport and you're going to get on one of those big jets and you're going to fly to uh, some exotic place believing that that jet, that really big jet with uh, many, many parts that you know nothing about, at least most of us anyway, that it's going to take off and it's going to fly you safely to your destination and you're going to have faith that that pilot or pilots are going to know what they're doing. Every single one of us live by faith. But here's the thing is that when you read the, the scripture, we, well, let me say it this way. When we live every single day, we, we live based on uh, knowing and depending on certain things, whether it be clean water or brakes or airplanes that fly. But here's the thing about God is that God always um, succeeds. He never fails. He never breaks down. He never lies. He never fails uh, not to work. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, our faith is founded. The substance of it is Jesus Christ, the God, the creator of the universe, and the evidence, the proof, the information that it is true and right and well. It's completely documented and fully available for us to access in faith. Our faith is the substance, the, the firm foundation of things hoped for. It is the evidence, the proof of things not seen. Now here's the, the second part of this, that if you're gonna follow Jesus, you're gonna walk in faith, it requires faith. It, it requires that we believe. This is what this Hebrews writer said. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please. In other words, it's impossible to please God without faith. Now let's dive into this word impossible if we can, just for a minute. The Greek word for impossible is the word Adonatos, and the prefix of the word, it means no or none or without. And the main part of the word, the possible part, it means power. So put this together, this is what it means. So the word impossible means, it literally means without power. See, without faith, we are helpless and powerless to please God. There, there's nothing else outside of our faith that pleases him. Do you know it, it doesn't have anything to do with your good works or the things that you say? You, you can pray the greatest of prayers. You can even perform miracles. But the Bible says that it is only by faith that we can please God. So if, that, if, that's, um, if the only way that we can please God is by faith, it means that the number one aim of our lives of, of walking in faith is to please him. It's to please God with our lives. That, that walking in faith each and every day, my, my, my number one aim is that God is pleased with the life that I live. You know, it, it doesn't matter who you make mad as long as God is pleased. It doesn't matter who you please if God is not pleased. See, our number one aim of walking in faith is to please God. See, our eyes are healthy when, when they can see and they adjust to light, our ears when they hear a sound, but a heart is healthy when it pleases God. Uh, our hearts are healthy when our, our, our life goal, that the, the focus of our days, the, the things that we do is all about living in a way that pleases Him. And so there are two critical 
uh, convictions of the person that walks in faith. Again, based on Hebrews uh, 11, verse six, it says, here's, here's the first conviction, is that you must believe he is. You already said that? That you must believe he is. See, walking in faith means that I believe that, that God exists. It's not just a, a, head, a head knowledge that God exists. It's a heart knowledge that he exists. See, I understand that, that God is who God said he is. That he is the God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he is a, a gracious and good and loving and faithful heavenly father. And see, when I believe that, when I understand that, not just here, but I understand it down here, it, it changes the way we live, doesn't it? Amen. It does. It changes the way we live. See, if I believe that airplane's gonna take off and it's gonna land where it's supposed to be, I'll get on it. But I believe it. What does it look like when we truly believe that God exist it changes what's important to us doesn't it it changes the objects of our affection that we can look beyond the world and and think that having more is better you just have more stuff that it's going to make everything better see people of faith we see beyond that we see beyond that which we can touch, that which we can hear, that, that which we can see with our eyes. We know that the greatest things of life are beyond what we can see because we have this conviction in our heart of hearts that God exists. Here's the second conviction, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Walking in faith, it is trusting again in the goodness and the character of our heavenly father that we we understand that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. You know what that means? That means that your number one goal when you came in to worship this morning is that you would worship God. Not that you would, not nostalgia, not that you would hear the song that you wanted to hear or anything like that, is that when you came into this space, when you sat down in that pew, that you focused on worshiping God. Last week, I I spoke to the, the choir and I told them this, is that they are singing to and leading us to singing to an audience of one. That audio of one is not you and it's not me, it's God. And we worship God because we know and we recognize that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. You know why I wanna seek God? Because I wanna be in God's presence. I I wanna be in the presence of God when we worship and when we sing. I I wanna be in God's presence because it's in God's presence that I understand not only more about who he is, but I understand more about who I am. And I know that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. You know what people that walk in faith do? They know that God exists but they also pursue the presence of God in worship and in their daily lives. I wonder how many of us this morning, uh, at some point this week, you just took some time and you worshiped the Lord in your house. You might do that. You, you just turned on your favorite worship music or hymn and you just spent time worshiping and thanking God for who he is that you were pursuing his presence right there in your home. You didn't have to be in the church. You were, you were, it was church right where you are. That's what people of faith do is they recognize that he is a rewarder of all that is good and great. Are you walking by faith today? Don't think about the person sitting next to you. Don't elbow them or anything like that. I actually saw that happen over here. Don't do that. Don't be mad at me. We're friends, right? It's about us, isn't it? We have to determine, am I walking in faith? Do I have to see it before I believe it? 
Or do I see it in spite of what may be true around me? I see it. You know what I see? I see a church that's full. I see a church that's rebuilding for the glory of God. I see a church that is gonna be a strong force for the kingdom of God in this community, but not just in this community, but in the world. I I see a people who come on Sunday morning and they are so excited to get into that door, not so they can get their favorite seat, although I like where y'all sit because I know that you're here, but they come today knowing that they get to sing and worship a God who is alive and a God who is well and a God who performs miracles and a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, when I look out, I see a people who aren't even here yet. I see a church that's doing missions, powerful work all around the world. I see a church that worships, not only in here, but out there. And it's so contagious that that people wanna have what they have. And they show up in this place. Can you see? Can you believe? I know I do. And that's what it means to walk by faith. And here's the thing. If we're gonna pass this baton of faith to the next generation, it means that we have to be serious about following Jesus, but also that we have to be serious about reaching people who aren't here yet. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful that you are a gracious and a good and a loving Heavenly Father. We are thankful, God, that, um, that you are there right there in our midst and around us, even when we don't recognize it. That God, even when we doubt and we don't believe, God, you're right there. That God, even when we don't think that you're with us, that what's happening in our own hearts and in our lives is so difficult, God, that we can't see you. You're there. And so Lord, today, we come before, before the throne of grace, recognizing your goodness and your love and your mercy and your grace for us. And we receive it into our hearts and our lives, asking God that you would guide us with eyes of faith into the future. Let it be so for us in Jesus' name, amen.